January 15, 2019. After CES, Sony announced this A6400. An interchangeable lens camera with APS C sensor that can do this. In October 2016, when Sony announced A6500, it was $1,400. And this is only $899. They are both 24.2 megapixel cameras that look identical to the untrained eye. Although A6400 has a different battery door, the battery lock lever is on the other side. And the USB and HDMI ports are reversed. And the price went down 500 and the model number went down by 100. Yet still it is packed with 4K 30 frames per second, 100 megabits per second HDR, 1080p 120 frames per second slow motion video, 11 frames per second continuous shooting with autofocus and auto exposure. Also A6400 has always on eye autofocus where you can select which eye you want A6400 to focus on. By the way I was curious about right and left. It is stage right and left. So when you select left it is according to the model. Also now it can track an object and keep it in focus all the time and I have to tell you that it is very impressive. If you like, you can touch anywhere on the screen to focus to that point. Plus, it focuses in 0.02 seconds, which makes it world's fastest autofocusing camera. I mean, A6500 focuses in 0.05 seconds. Just think about waiting for that to focus. You can't even. I can't even. A6400 has 425 phase and contrast autofocus points, which is 2.5 times more contrast autofocus points compared to A6500. Even though it has the same battery, the battery life is better. A6400 takes 410 photos compared to A6500's 350. Also, A6400 shoots 125 minute video, where A6500 shoots only 105 minute video. One, two, three. Talking about video, thanks to the tax laws, A6400 does not have 29 minute video record time limit. So the sky is the limit. One, two, three. And by that I mean your memory card and your battery and the heat. Actually, when it comes to A6400, heat is not a problem. My A6500 overheated and shut down after 33 minutes and 23 seconds of recording 4K 30 frames per second video. When it did, it had 53% battery left, where at exact same moment A6400 had 68% battery remaining. It took A6400 1 hour and 23 seconds to overheat and shut down. Also compared to A6500, A6400 has higher ISO range. It can go up to 32,000 instead of 25,600 in video and 102,400 instead of 51,200 in photo. 
A6500 dims the screen when you switch to 4K video mode, which makes it impossible to see the screen while you're outside. A6400 doesn't. It even lets you keep the sunny brightness level, which makes it one of the best improvements on this camera. Also, the flip up screen made us very happy. So look at that flip up screen! Yep. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's you, cool. you guys can't, well, you can't see because you're filming, but. Flip up. Look at yeah. that. Can you yeah. please believe it? Even though you may need a bracket to be able to see the screen and use an external mic at the same time, the screen gives you better viewing opportunities in other angles as well. And it is 50 grams lighter. So I know what you're thinking. Features be packing, but something must be lacking. What you do, Sony? Well, that's a very nice and sweet haiku. I guess the hint is in the 50 grams that is missing. A6400 does not have 5-axis in-body image stabilization A6500 has, which is why this camera can be so much cheaper. So how bad is it compared to A6500? Both A6500 and A6400 have 10 to 18 f4 lens on them, which has optic image stabilization. And as you can see, it is so hard to tell the difference. Let's slow the footage down. I think as long as you have a lens that has optical steady shot, there won't be a noticeable difference between A6400 and A6500. Now well, let's rub. When it comes to rolling shutter, A6400 has exactly the same amount of rolling shutter that we know and love from A6500. And just like A6500, it crops by 18% while shooting in 4K 30 frames per second compared to 24 frames per second. Also, A6400 doesn't have the MP4 file format. The grip on A6400 is smaller compared to A6500, which makes me want to squeeze the camera more rather than have it resting on my fingers. A6500 has three customizable buttons. A6400 has two. I didn't care about that because you can use shutter button to start recording a video. In A6500, you cannot do that. That's why I was using custom button 2 to start recording a video. Why? Isn't there a dedicated record button for video? Well, there is. But don't laugh when you see the placement. <laughs> yeah. Also, A6400 has built-in time-lapse feature. A6500 doesn't have that. You have to go into Play Store and buy it for $10. Now when you look at the screen and if the ISO is set to the auto, you see the actual ISO value. In A6500 it just says ISO auto. There is this new feature called face priority in multimetering where it adjusts the exposure with a face priority. A6500 doesn't have that. They added S and Q on top of the dial instead of having it in a menu. So in A6400, it's easier to switch between these two modes. Talking about that dial, it may look like it has only one memory recall slot. In reality, A6400 actually has three memory recall slots. The camera turns on faster, the menus are faster, and on top of that, the menu is actually looking better it looks nicer. You get to have my menu where you can put the stuff you like in. In photo mode, you can set up custom shoot set for one button setting change to something you predefined. The custom keys are separate for video, photo and playback mode and they are so much easier to understand. Same thing goes for the function menu as well. You can go into the menu while the camera is writing on the card. And the burst photos appear grouped which makes things tidy. Also, you can choose JPEG's quality even in RAW plus JPEG file format. You can set custom auto white balance in its own slot. If you want to set a custom auto white balance on C1, 
you can just do it there. Well, let me tell you a story. Until April 2017, I only used point and shoot cameras on my channel. Mostly because I had budget limitations and the best camera I could buy at that point was RX100 Mark V, which was $1,000. But then a time came and I had to upgrade my camera. I needed something better. I tried a couple of cameras and I didn't like them. And during that process, a lot of you recommended me to look into A6500. To which I said, doesn't that have that rolling shutter problem that you all complain about? To which you said, just get one, it won't matter. And so I did. And what you were saying was true. It didn't matter much at all and on top of that as you see in this video the in-body image stabilization didn't make that much of a difference when you have a lens that has optical image stabilization even though a6500 has in-body image stabilization whenever i went to ces or nab i used that camera with a gimbal so for content creators that need something better for their channel i think a6400 is a really good camera considering its price and what you're getting out of it but i have to warn you when you get a camera like that when you get a camera that you can buy lenses to you're gonna be sitting on your couch and just browsing lenses and you will be buying lenses instead of spending that money to fix your kitchen be warned. I paid $2,147 for my A6500 plus 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Same setup with A6400 costs $1,697. Plus with the flip screen, when you set this up at home, you're not gonna need an extra monitor. So A6400, even though it looks very much like A6500, is a very fine tuned A6500 that I wish it was on sale when I was buying A6500. I'd much rather buy A6400. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it and join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about Sony A6400 in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves. And hoşçakalın.